Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 66 of the Division Z podcast. My name is Jason. And I'm Kate Cosmic. Today, not only do we get to execute Order 66 and kill all the Jedi, <laughs> we get to talk Star about... Star Wars reference. You know, we gotta, you like, gotta love the Star Wars references. <laughs> uh, we get to talk about Vanguard zombies and how absolutely fucking insane it looks. Um, yes. we got We got demons. We've got... Altars, we've got we sacrificial got hearts, Eilish. we've got we Billy Eilish. Eilish as well. You know, it's, it's crazy. What is Call of Duty Zombies in the year 2021, everybody? I mean, this is some crazy <laughs> stuff. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit, and then, of course, as we normally do, we'll probably transition to other stuff like Forsaken, and then eventually we'll probably talk about Black Ops 4. Black Ops 4, um, exactly, because we always, uh, talk, about we always talk about Black Ops 4. We actually, we actually had a discussion, and we wanted to change the uh, podcast name from Division Z to Black Ops 4 Zombies, but right. Jason it's a good idea. Right, or of course. Yeah, the Black Ops reason. 4, the Black Ops 4 podcast. Uh, for some uh, reason he didn't like the name. Uh, uh, you know, I took it on the chin. It's, I don't it's I don't funny, I don't so. think the community would like the name either. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. but you know, before <laughs> we get into everything though, I would like to say that Saturday, October 23rd, we are hosting another charity event with Stack Up. That is going to be taking place, like I said, October 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So if you guys want to join the live stream, help us support veterans and, you know, just have a fun time with us. We're going to be playing some Call of Duty and we're going to be we're going to be contributing to a great cause here, helping out Absolutely. veterans with, you know, mental health needs and getting them, you know, the support they need for their certain you know, things that are troubling them that, mm -hmm. you know, they it's it's basically like mental health and, you know, just well-being, overall well-being, not just mental health, but it's overall well-being, help and support for veterans. And, you know, we we just really think Stack Up is a great, great organization that helps out. And they they, they do it through the power of video games, too. So, you know. It, it I just think it's a match made in heaven where you know we work Absolutely. with we're working with stack up on this and then you know it's gonna be great it's gonna be great you guys know the spiel we worked with them before so I want to keep that a little bit short there and we'll we'll talk more about it later but um Absolutely. yeah man Vanguard zombies is gonna be uh it's gonna be a different experience I think definitely looks like the most <laughs> I would I probably say it looks like one of the most unique sort of zombie iterations we've had so far yeah don't get me wrong i think it's taken a lot of aspects from world war ii zombies and that's to be expected because i think instead of it being a turk focused game mode i'm sure that sledgehammer is helping out here and there with perhaps using some old things from the older games and right. just in general but i mean what, what are your initial thoughts on the trailer other than the billy eilish song i mean what, what are your thoughts so my initial thoughts are this is gonna be dark and what I mean mm -hmm. by dark, and it, it's going to be scary too, but not in the yeah. sense of scary where it's going to be, you know, um, force fed, you know, hand fisted kind of, oh, look how, whoa, jump scare creepy and whoa, look how <laughs> scary, scary, you know, yeah. like, like, yeah. The, like the cheap Halloween jump scares that we got with World War II zombies. I think this Which is going to be <laughs> one of those experiences that... It the way it's going to be dark and scary is going to be the themes and the things that it portrays in the game, like the occult. You literally in yeah. this game, in order to get an upgrade for your weapons, it's called the Altar of Covenants. You sacrifice a heart to get a weapon upgrade, like something like that. It, it might sound like a normal just video game concept, right? It sounds like something out of Diablo, but like. But with the whole theme that's going on there, the altar of covenants and the sacrificial hearts, you form a symbiotic bond with with a demon, Which is cool. and mm. like these these dark and creepy themes, and you do like seances, like it, it's 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 creepy. So I think this it game's is. gonna have this really creepy vibe, these demonic overtones that are really going to, you know, for lack of a better term, I guess, loom over the entire map of Der Anfang. And I think it's going to be interesting. I, I'm i really looking forward to seeing how Treyarch implements this occult vibe into the game and um, just just how creepy it is. Because this is looking kind of creepy. But not, like I said, not in the sense of like, whoa, look how scary oh God, creepy. Look, like, look, a window. A window is... Like, <laughs> like, like, like they're, they're genuinely taking this seriously. It, like it's they're creepy genuinely, in the sense that it's, yeah. it's not like a, a horror movie who wants to throw in a jump scare every five seconds. Right. It's more they're focusing on the atmosphere and right. what's kind of going on around you. Like it's not like they're trying to hide anything. Right. It's um, for example, you know, you know, something like Outlast. The jump scares aren't what really get you. It's the creepy atmosphere where you're looking around okay. the surroundings and like 
like wow what awful things are going to happen here see i've never that's played outlast so i i wouldn't but, know but, to be honest but it's like with any horror game you get the ones where they try and throw in jump scares 24 7 yeah yeah but then you get the ones where it's you walk in and you just feel eerie because you're like ah oh, this place yeah. feels nasty you know it doesn't not appealing with the whole setting of like an occult you know it's it's something they haven't really dabbled in too much before i'm excited that they've actually found a new sort of way to take the story and the thing is too it's uh, it's gonna give off an unsettling feeling too because you know demons demons as a whole i mean you look at you look back at histories of, of of demonic cults and you look back at histories of some of these you know yeah, I guess uh, cults, for lack of a better term, again, yeah. you know, it, they got a, it's creepy. You know, a lot of this is demented and just really creepy. And mm-hmm. when you combine that with real world history, you know, with the Nazis and the Nazis looking into the occult, and then you take that and you put that into a game and then you give this creepy demonic overtone to it i just pure evil pure evil it's pure yeah. evil that you're going against and it's, it's not it's not it, like something it's like crazy Dr. monty or the shadow man right yeah there's there's aspects throughout there's why amb- they want ambiguity to do there, yeah this this is just like not not good there's not no one really wins yeah. in this yeah, Oberfuhrer okay. von Licht looks like he's uh he's definitely going to be doing some kind of crazy thing with um uh, Cortifex, which is one of the demons mm. that uh, you form a symbiotic bond with. Or I should say, actually, the field upgrades, for those of you who don't know, are the demons. Yes, so, because you, get, you, you become somewhat attached to them, don't you? Because they have a lot of like, personality in that. Yeah. Control over you, I guess, in a way you and, could say as well. And that's what's really cool about you know this game. I know a lot of people are don't like Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Oh, it doesn't have personality. Da, 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 da. I, which I disagree. I, I disagree with <laughs> yeah. that. But you know, I think this can really appease those people who criticize Black Ops Cold War, where now every little thing has personality, including your field upgrades, which they're calling artifacts this time around. You have um, Invictor, which is Ring of Fire. You have um, uh, Seraxis, which that is Frost Blast, um, Bellacore, which is Ether Shroud, and uh, Nordicus, which is uh, uh, Frost Blast. Or no, uh, Energy oh. Mine. Uh, so those are the four core demon lords that you get to form this symbiotic relationship with. And then mm. Cortifex, which is like the, the demon god king or something like that he's the most powerful one of course he's the one who forms the uh the bond with the nazi mm. so you know what i like as well <laughs> i like this as well right is even if we don't get a playable set of characters i don't know if they've confirmed this yet or not i don't think yeah no have. we're definitely doing operators they showed kingsley yeah. and and um, well, there you go. all those people right? in the trailer well them using this method of the field upgrades it gives them characters a little bit more personality yeah for sure absolutely. in a way because you know because there's it's not just like a simple like you know, and then food upgrade, there's right. a lot more personality. And imagine throughout the games as well, they'll talk to you and, like, say stuff. And I, I think it's a really cool idea. Yeah. I'm glad they really went down this route with it and made it so they had a little bit more personality with them. And also, it's it's good for world building, too. Yeah, I exactly, think, you yeah. know, a lot of people have so, so many questions about the Dark Aether and why this storyline? What does this have anything to do with anything? And the fact that, you know, the Dark Aether storyline is going in this direction where we have um, demon lords that build up and build into the overall lore of the Dark Aether storyline, you know, we can really start to understand the world that we're playing through. And so, mm-hmm. you know... I ass- I would assume at least through Intel because I I guarantee you Intel's coming back. I would assume through Intel that we get to learn about Cortifex and Seraxis and Bellacor and all these other demons that you know why do they inhabit the Dark Ether? Why do they exist? Mm. You know why do they have these special powers? Because like I sa- said earlier with this with the field upgrades. I said those demons have those powers. Cortifex's power is to raise the dead, and that's where these zombies are first initially coming from. Yeah. So why, like, what I r- I'm really curious about is what happened between this game and Black Ops Cold War. Cold War to to make the Dark Ether totally different than what it seems like in this game. Like in this game, the Dark Ether looks like hell. I mean, yeah, what doesn't, happened? Doesn't really seem, yeah, it doesn't even seem like it's really connected. Yeah, that's it what I'm like really curious game, about. It, it, like this, this is like a threat before like the Dark Ether, and it probably won't really tie. I get it will tie into the game in the long run, sure, 
but I think this is probably just a really bad event that happened before everything was called. You know, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a weird. The, the tone change is quite good. I, I quite like how they're trying to make yeah. games so obviously. Because I think with Cold War, they focus a lot, a lot more on, like, Nazi experiments and all that stuff. Well, this is focusing more on, like, you know, cults and all that. And right. it's a lot more of, like, a kind of like a spooky atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And I, I like that. I like that. And the thing is, too, they're they're going... Uh, they're going to explain Project End Station in depth. Like yeah. I know, I know the intel already in Cold War kind of explained a little bit more of Project End Station, but this game is really going to explain Project End Station. Like we're we are going to be, if not revisiting D Machina, I think at at some point in the future, or I don't know what's going to happen, or maybe it's just intel. But if you notice in the in the behind the scenes video they posted, um. Uberfier von Licht is is going through photos, and we see Project End Station, and there's Doctor Vogel, and someone in my comment section on the video that I made about it said that was um, that was uh, Valentina's uncle, that was in the other really? photo as well. So wow. it's one of those things where you got this this huge connection to everything. I thought it was Strauss at first because Strauss used to work at Project End Station but mm-hmm. according to people in my comment section it was actually Valentina's uncle that took care of her or something like that you know after Vogel died or something um so i mean it's going to be crazy man crazy. i'm really looking forward to yeah. seeing what like why like did pro- what what did Project End Station do to contribute to what's going on with these demon lords that's going to be the biggest question mark why is Project End Station so important. Why is it the catalyst? Because obviously Project End yeah. Station opened up the first portal. That's what's in, that's what's told in the intel. The first Dark Aether portal that started all this craziness, and then the Nazis closed it up, the Russians reopened it, and then you have Cold War. But, like, how did we get to Project End Station? And that's, that's going to be something that's really great to explore, I think, in Vanguard. Absolutely, man. I mean, it just, with zombies, it feels like they always hook you back in. Yeah. In one way, shape, or form, whether it's gameplay, amount of maps, story, over atmosphere. And it's good to be kind of like during this uh, time period again where we're kind of getting excited for the game. And but, but with this as well, it seems like a lot of people are being perhaps a little bit negative towards the game with the information that's been revealed so far. Yeah. And that's what yeah, I was about and... to mention. I was about to mm-hmm. mention we can't go without saying there are a lot of people in the community with concerns about what's going to be happening in the new game. Um, because again, if you guys don't know what ended up being released, um, Der Anfang is going to be a mix game mode. It's going to be a hybrid game mode between round based outbreak and onslaught. You're teleporting back and forth between regions. Most of these regions are on multiplayer maps and it's round based at the same time. So, you know, and you have objectives to complete on every single map. So a lot of people are really concerned about the longevity of this game because they believe it's going to ruin the essence of zombies and ruin the essence of what made round-based good in the first place. What do you think about that? Uh, I I think with zombies, it's one of them things where we're kind of getting past the point of rounds. And I I, I think rounds should always be in zombies in one way, shape, or form. For sure. I think a perfect example would be a standalone game where there was one game mode that was just normal rounds, and then right. they could expand on it with like something like Outbreak, and then other game modes as well. Now, I, I think with round-based stuff as well, it seems like after the Easter egg, no matter how good the map <clears> is now compared to before, people just move on and get bored. So I think it's perfectly understandable why they're wanting to try something else, because Treyarch probably looking at this from the overall community standpoint, like, mm. okay, Forsaken came out a week ago, people played it, bet the Easter egg, sure there's still people playing it, but obviously the player count goes from this to this. Mm-hmm. Like in the time span of a few days, I think their thought process is that we want something that people will play consistently and enjoy. Something like, you know, like even multiplayer. I don't like multiplayer, but I can understand why someone would want to jump on, you know, a few times a day or right. once a day after work. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. but with zombies, it's either so much time you're, you're spending a lot of time in the game mode, either doing Easter eggs or high rounds. I think this is something like a casual game mode where you can jump in, and I think that's something they're trying to market towards as well as the casual players because for sure outbreak. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I don't think it was bad by any means. I think it was quite fun, but I just didn't really see the point in playing it. But for a lot of casual players, they really did enjoy the game mode. Right. If you ask any casual, or most casuals at least, I'd like to think, if you give them round base and outbreak, they'll prefer outbreak. Hmm. In a lot of ways. And it's one of the things where 
it's bad in a way because they're trying to market to more casual players because that's where sort of the bigger audience is. So us, you know, people that are a bit more hardcore and enjoy the game mode for how many years, maybe we don't get exactly what we want in a way, but it's the healthiest thing for the game. Overall, hmm. I think it'll be a good product, and I, I'm, I'm excited to play the game mode. I am very excited to play the game mode. Yeah, you, may, you make a really way. good point there about the fact that, you know, Treyarch is definitely catering once again towards the casual player. Which where is absolutely fine. It makes sense. It's, it makes sense on a business standpoint, right? I, I, yeah. I know where a lot of people are really upset about that because, oh, what about the people who've played zombies since World at War? And, you know, what about us? You know, why, why do we get, you know, uh, uh, left to the side? The simple answer for that, I guess, it would be because, like you just said, there's going to be a lot more casual players out there playing. That's yeah. the simple answer. The mm -hmm. long answer would be, you know, because there's more casuals playing, I think Treyarch realizes, I mean, they have to, right? That Treyarch has to realize that people are veterans in this game. You know, people, people have played since World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, whatever. And so they want to incorporate different parts of different experiences into one yeah. culminating experience to try to create a game mode for everybody. So mm, that's I feel the end like, goal. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, 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 I think that's the end goal. They want to have a good harmonized game mode that casual players can play and the hardcore players can play. So, mm. I mean, with Vanguard zombies, I see a lot of people getting really upset about it on Twitter and things like that. I, I just all I have to say and all I have to contribute to that conversation is we'll see what happens. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try yeah. first. If you don't like it, great. If you like it, great. Because it's you the know. case as well where you know potentially zombies wouldn't have even happened this year. You know, we didn't even know Trek were making this game until right. about a few months ago. Yeah. And I think I think I think what's something important to realize as well is that I think the way to look at this game is is obviously in Cold War we got four maps in total. An outbreak and all that, correct? Right? Yeah, that's what we got. What I look at this game as is that season, that year content spread across two games. Mm -hmm. That is what I would look at this game as. Like, I don't think we'll get four maps this game. I think we'll get three. So essentially, we'll three like, maps. so essentially, Black Ops Cold War Year Two. Is, is, yeah, exactly. But but it's, but, just, but it's just under Vanguard. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think this will be another branch of of Cold War per se, uh, just under so, Vanguard now with yeah. with demonic themes and and more yeah. and, and different aspects. Because it, if you notice, them... the arsenal is gone too. Absolutely, I've seen that as well because they're going for more of a. Uh, they have the crafting table, the armor, lethal, and tacticals. Yeah. So there's no and there's arsenal. No sign of kill streaks either. No sign of kill streaks either. So like you know, this is gonna be different. Mm -hmm. And what's going to be interesting, too, I don't know if you also noticed this, no wall buys. Really? No wall buys. They're, they're, leaving, they're leaving it up to the mystery box, and they're leaving it up to weapon upgrades and, and, and stronger weapons you pick up from zombies and you pick up from challenges and covenants and things like that. Now, I like that idea. <laughs> Because I feel like I'll give the weapons a little bit more personality in the sense you won't get you won't get to use exactly what you want when you want to use it. Hmm. You spawn in with the weapon you want. I would assume so. I mean, well, I I, that, I think they I think they would be dumb to get rid of that after they put it in Black Ops Cold War. I think the, I think they should keep that. I, but, I think yeah. so as well. Absolutely, yeah. So then you can actually have the weapon you want, I guess, if you were desperate to do something like leveling up your weapon or hmm. wh whatever you know you want to do. I, arm. I liked armor. I like the armory system. I'm, I'm probably. I'm happy it's kind of gone as well. I hope the weapons. I, I think with the weapons, the <laughs> tier upgrades, because they haven't confirmed them coming back, have they? Yeah, no. That we don't know if that's coming back or no, not. No, no. That system, I didn't mind it, but honestly, I think it's just extra work. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't mind if it didn't come back. You know, I think having it at that golden tier level wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, that's the thing. I think a lot of players, um, it depends on who you ask. So I, I can yeah. see where people are happy where it's not coming back, where, oh, cool, like I don't have to do all this salvage and I don't have to do all this random stuff to get my weapon upgrade, yeah. you know. And then you also have the argument where, you hit the mystery box and it's like, ah, oh, fuck, that's the weapon I want, but it's not the rarity I want, you know, and you got to like keep spinning the box and it's like, oh, that's the, but then it's the wrong color weapon. Oh, I wanted a, I wanted an orange weapon, but I got a blue weapon, you know? Yeah. So for a lot of people, you know, 
hitting the mystery box could be more valuable in Vanguard now because I, I, I've seen people criticize the Black Ops Cold War mystery box as, oh, well, because every single weapon is in the mystery box at every single rarity, you know, it, it gives the mystery box odds not it, it, there's not good odds in the mystery box in Cold War. Yeah. So I understand that argument, and I think it could be helpful for those players. But then the other hand, too, you know, it, it's a double-edged sword. Where I, what I really like about the uh, weapon rarity system is that every weapon has a path to be an uber weapon, okay. as yeah, uber as weapon. Craig yeah. Houston yeah, put in the yeah. reveal for Cold War, and that's mm. true. I think every weapon can be viable to a certain extent in, in the game. Now, obviously, every zombie experience is going to have that better weapon, right? Cold War, the M16, the Gal, the Hauer, those are the top dogs, right? Yeah. But every other weapon in the game can just about, almost, not all the way, but almost catch up to that. Whereas in previous games, you know, oh, the SMR is so crap, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd much, I'd much, yeah, I'd much rather have the Galil, right? Yeah. So this kind of with Cold War and the weapon rated system, it gives you more gameplay variety to be like, oh, I know for a fact that the XM4 is not as good as the Gallo. However, yeah. you know, if I upgrade my XM4 enough, my XM4 can be really good still. It's not going to be yeah. the Gallo. It's not going to be the M16, but it could still be pretty good. So, and I think even on top of that as well is the fact that weapons will can kill can uh can kill forever in Cold War because of ammo mods and that as well. Right. So every le- every weapon is brought up to the same level in one way or another. I know the Gallo is something that can kill in high rounds anyway without having ammo mods, but every weapon can kill in high rounds. I like that about Cold War. With Vanguard, there's so many, so many questions. They reveal this. They give us so many answers, but. So many more questions are at, you know, yeah, asked. Yeah, so well. many more. Th- we have so many more questions now than we started with with Vanguard. I mean, it's insane. And yeah. I kind of like it because now, mm. now we have a, a a basic understanding of how the game works, and I mean basic understanding. Like this is yeah, very basic. Yeah. You know, this is just you know. Okay, well, you have the covenants. You have your packet lunch machine back. You have the crafting table. You have the field upgrades, and now mm. everything else is going to be revealed in November. And it's yeah. like. Okay, and I think I think this gives players Thank something to look cool. forward to. I think this gives players yeah. something to look forward to because now I'm doesn't spoil. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't spoil it, and I'm kind of anxious to jump into the game and kind of be like, ooh, you know, how does this demon thing work? How do the how do the covenants truly work? How does mm. it work in practice? Is what I'm mainly curious about because yeah. you can read an article and it can sound really good, but if you gotta practice it, you gotta do it in practice in order for you to make that. Uh, a final solid opinion about what what the game is going to be about. So mm, that's absolutely. what I'm looking forward to is putting it into practice and like actually playing the game. Mm. Yeah, it looks it looks interesting. I think it'll be good. I think people are complaining about how there's no content at launch. And I, again, look at it like Cold War Season Two, perhaps where it's you know expanding towards Cold off what Cold War did and the content we were kind of missing in Cold War is probably going to come into this game. I Maybe, quite like yeah. the idea of having it spread out as well because that means that we are never not having anything for a long period of time. I wouldn't mind they actually went this way forward. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy having, you know, five zombie maps, you know, from start to finish in a game. But at the same time, it's like if if the community has something to constantly talk about, whether that's a game mode, a zombie map, an update, I think it's better for the community in general and the player base. Right, yeah. I think, I think the more the merrier, right? And, you know, for, for people, oh, well, these games don't have content. I beg to differ. Um, these games have a crap load of content that you can delve into. And that's up to personal opinion if you get bored of it or not. I I, yeah. I, I just, you know, where people, I think people dog on each other too much on Twitter. and they And they try to insult each other on Twitter too much about, oh, well, you know, what about Black Ops 3? I guess Black Ops 3 didn't exist. And I was like, no, we're not saying that. We're just saying that Cold War has a lot of content to it, and you could make the argument that Cold War has more content than Black Ops 3. It depends what you're going for, I guess, because if you're looking at the argument of... It's personal preference. Yeah, if you're looking at maps, yes, obviously Black Ops 3 had more maps. I had Zombies Chronicles, it had two maps at launch and yeah the game overall was probably received a lot better than cold war the cold war has a lot of content in other ways through progression and leveling up weapons right and 
I think as well with something like Cold War, we have to keep in mind that we have separate game modes. Black Ops 3 didn't have any separate game modes. Right. Which is important to remember as well. That is and very al important. along that as well, you can unlock your... I, you can level up your stuff, obviously. Your character in general. Your field upgrades. You have your ammo types, ammo mods. You know, all that stuff as well. There's so much that I think people forget about with Cold yeah. War. And even though I think Black Ops 3 is a better game, I think Cold War is a better structured game. Is what I'm going to say. Because I think well, going go. into Cold War... Cold War looks like something they've taken, taken zombies from the ground up. They haven't completely killed off what makes zombies fun. But they've redefined it and reworked it to fit better for our current game. Because mm -hmm. zombies has been the exact same thing pretty much since World at War. Probably up to Black Ops 3. Yeah. Black Ops 4, they did it in a way the community didn't like so much. Obviously with the perk system and some other choices they made as well. The Cold War, I feel like everyone kind of wins. They got rid of stupid stuff like, oh, no perk limit. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Totally, dude. I totally get that point. And I, yeah, I think that's a solid point to make where, yeah, it, I think every every year since Black Ops 4, what Treyarch has done with zombies, they've tried to do something super innovative. I mean, yeah. Let me let me rephrase that. Every year since I would say Black Ops 2. Because, yeah. you know, Black Ops 2 is when they really tried, oh, transit, big open map that has a lot of areas and then, you know, transit didn't really do so well. Uh no. And then you have other systems in Black Ops 2, and then you have Black Ops 3 with Gobblegums, Black Ops 4 with the uh, Create a Class, first ever Create a Class system in Zombies, Cold War expanding upon that even further. And then you just, I mean, Zombies in itself, is it's inevitable that it's going to continue to innovate. Zombies is, mm. is going to consistently march forward. They're going to try new things. They're going to consistently go forward with Outbreak, with Onslaught, with Round Based. They're going to try to do everything. So I think for yeah. those for those people, this is my opinion, of course. I don't necessarily have any concrete evidence to go off of, but just kind of looking at some of the trends that we've seen with previous games and with what happened with Cold War, for the people saying, oh, round base is dead, no more round-based maps, it's over, guys, zombies community's dead, you know, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so, because I think even Treyarch knows that's a death sentence. So... Mm -hmm. I think they're going to continue to innovate in every aspect. They're going to try to, uh, with their Anfang, they're going to try to make everything in one game mode. And then later on, they, I think they're going to do more round-based maps. They have to, I think. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think I think from a, a sort of content-wise looking at it, it makes sense to have something that you can update consistently. I like, was well, only right. map, you can only do so much to it. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can add new weapons and that, but you can't actually really update the map too much. But this game mode, it kind of allows yeah. them, I guess you could say, to... They, I, I don't know if they're planning of adding more maps into it. They could, right. you know, you know, I mean, it's one of the things where they could do that. Right, because Dur Anfang could very well be just the, the outbreak of Vanguard, and we're just... Yeah. We're, we're launching Vanguard with Outbreak. And we're not launching with a round-based map until maybe season one or whatever they like whenever they want to release that map, right? Um, yeah. So their Anfang would be, yeah, just Outbreak 2.0. Uh, mm. And the fact of the matter is, I just lost my train of thought. That's what the matter of the fact the, is. The, the matter of the fact is, I hate that. That's what that's one of the worst things ever. When you just lose your train of thought, I hate that so much. <laughs> oh, well, I had a good point too. <laughs> I had a good point. I was gonna say I something. Damn it's it! Great because you have it in your head. Like, oh yes, this is gonna be a great point. It's something that communities gonna talk about for days, and then <laughs> oh, uh, did ah, oh, no. that's gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> it must have been a good idea if you forgot about it. <laughs> oh wow oh i see i see <laughs> uh dude i mean we'll just have to see i, th I think long story short yeah. we'll just have to see what happens with vanguard zombies i do have to say though der anfang that sounds like a really cool name and it means the beginning in german by the way for those of you who don't know uh Very cool and i think yeah, it just it just sounds cool like der anfang like it, it's got a bite Kind of like uh, Der Eisendrach. Like, it's like, ah! It's like a... <laughs> there's, like, yeah, something it, it, to yeah. it. There's, like, there's like a good something to it there. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I remembered my point. Um, oh. So what you were saying about, oh, you know, only, you can only do so much with a map and, you, you know, they don't update the maps all that much. I think they can. 
And here's and here's okay. why. Because you have things, and I know people are going to totally be like, oh, yeah, that was a thing. Remember Jingle Hells? And that, y- yes. Okay. I, I, I get your, I get your okay. point. Okay. So Jingle Hells, right? You do that for Halloween. You do that for Christmas again. You do that for whatever. Even Valentine's Day. Fuck it. Why not? All the zombies you kill explode yeah. into hearts. Whatever. Um, Like... You can up. I think you can update the map with certain little events like that. You have bet, like yeah. cranked. You have little uh, 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 updates like that. And and even that too, yeah. even outbreak. I think a lot of people, well, except for people who play outbreak a lot and collect the intel, but I think people who don't play outbreak kind of overlook the fact that outbreak is getting constantly updated, even if it's the small updates, where there's constantly new intel for you to collect an outbreak with every new season. So. You know, you can add things to the maps, and I think Treyarch can do that. The question is, what would they add if they would add anything at all? Would it be a seasonal event? Would it be, you know, oh, find this new secret thing? Actually, they literally did that with Mauer der Toten because they, they, they put in the, yeah, they that, put in they the Easter egg how to get the free Casimir. And in this in the manhole in the on the street of of Berlin, mm. and they added mimics to the map when you like uh, occasionally oh random jump scare mimic and you kill the mimic right so they can do little map mm-hmm. updates like that yeah the question is will they do that for Vanguard so I mean yeah if Vanguard were to add in little updates like with Mauer to and adding in that little side Easter egg they did and all the other little initial updates as well be really cool but I I don't know because they seem like. They don't have a survival map ready for launch, it would seem like. I know they're wanting to try something new. Maybe they're pushing mm-hmm. this and set up a survival map to try and get people hooked in. Yeah. But it seems like if they have the stuff ready, they would put a survival map and this game mode as well. Whether that or they're trying to spread out content, maybe. Who knows? But that's, them that's updating, the thing, right? it'd be cool. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be cool to see them update it like a normal survival map. But yeah, I yeah. Think they can't up- I think they can't update it to the extent of, you know, changing stuff about. Or adding in new parts to the map. Well, with this game mode, they can do that. Yeah, you know, I think what's interesting about that's the, like the whole concept of outbreak and the whole concept of that is that you can add new maps, you can add new things to a game mode over time. And you know, with with round based, you have just that map, right? And there's nothing wrong with just having that map. I mean, obviously, the best experiences in zombies are round based as of right now. Um, so it's one of those things where, yeah, you can add new maps to Outbreak or to Duranfang, but where you have to add things to the round-based maps are little side Easter eggs, like the LT-53 Casimir thing on Mauer. You add, you know, other things here and there, right? So, you know, I mean, I think it's... I think it'll be really interesting, to be honest, to see if yeah. if anything else gets added. I mean, honestly, the re- I think the reason why we're not getting a round-based map at the start, or I should say a traditional round-based map at the start, yeah. is because of uh, we just got Forsaken. And I think exactly. it, I think it's giving Forsaken some the, time the to like a, like, breathe. Yeah, because I think Forsaken is supposed to be like a finale, obviously. It's the right. last map in the season. It should last a little bit longer, perhaps, than the other right. zombie maps as well. So... I think, and this is another good point that people online bring up, is that Mm -hmm. we have this new map. It's going to still be pretty much brand new when Vanguard comes out. Right. So if you want a new zombie map to play, play Forsaken, because it is still brand new. You know, there's you can't have played it that much in the past month or so. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, think Forsaken, I mean, it's a week old. It's it's a week yeah, exactly. old basically, so it's still a fresh map. It's still new. I know I know some people are already kind of like, well, that's Forsaken. I'm done. Okay, next game. I know some people are doing that right now, but I think Forsaken still has a little bit of replayability left to it, where you can still do more arcade games. You can still you know do little side Easter eggs. You can do the Easter egg multiple times because it's super easy, and then you can do the you can watch the cutscene over and over again and see our boy Rick Toffin. Rick Toffin, uh, absolutely. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I really like Forsaken. I think it's a cool map. I think it's pretty good. The Wonder Weapon's fun as hell. And um, honestly, it makes sense now why the Wonder Weapon is the Crystal Axe. Because mm, the Crystal Axe looks like something one of those demon lords would use as a weapon. So it does, doesn't it? It, it? The Wonder Weapon kind of ties in to this new demonic Dark Aether style. And also, speaking of Wonder Weapons, someone in my chat the other day on Twitch mentioned this. They did not talk about a wonder weapon in Daron Fong. 
They did not talk about anything wonder, like that. I wonder. I wonder if there'll be any at launch. I think, think there think has to be, dude. Will... I mean, I mean, I, I think they're holding that off until, like, Maybe. like the the November intel, the November information that they're gonna do. So, I don't know. It's gonna be cool to see, and I wonder if it's gonna be like Elemental on the weapons as well, in some way, to perform. Each player right. can have a unique one. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think. Elemental Wonder Weapons are a staple of zombies at this point. So I think at some point in Vanguard, they're going to do some kind of thing there, whether it's, you know, this is the, like, ancient evil. This is the blood element. This is death, you know, kind of a thing. I think that'd be kind of mm. cool. But, you know, just bring back the Hand of Caron. Just make that a Wonder Weapon in, in the new storyline. Forget about if it's a Chaos Wonder Weapon. Screw it. Come on, bring it, it back. Absolutely. It looks demonic. It looks scary. <laughs> Now, here, here, here's something I was thinking about, right? Here's something kind of going off the topic of um, kind of Vanguard and stuff now. Uh huh. Wouldn't the biggest plot twist be if, it, I mean, it's in Vanguard or in Cold, Cold War Two, I guess you could say. Mm. What if they made Chaos Cannon? You know I what mean, I mean? You... What if they made it in a sense? What, what, what if they did, for Like, what, how... How do you think the community would react? I think the community would probably react more to that than something ether related in the sense like like it'd be I, like, oh my god, I can't believe they've confirmed chaos to be relevant in this universe or something. I think if chaos were to be confirmed canon for the Dark Ether storyline, I think a lot more people would like the Dark Ether storyline, to be honest. Yeah. Uh I think a lot more people would be willing to give it more of a chance because of how now everybody is hopping on the uh, oh, chaos was actually I really good chaos. train. Yeah. And um, you know, I think Chaos personally does deserve another chance. Um, whether that be in Jason Blundell studio at Deviation Games or not, it has to be seen. But um, <laughs> You know, yeah, I think I think adding chaos to the Dark Ether storyline could be interesting because if we're going, if we're here's the thing, because chaos has elements of history and mythology, and you learn yeah. about the Greeks and, and ancient evil, and you have all this uh, folklore and yeah, mythology and history, Cold War being set in the Cold War, and Vanguard being set during World War II. You kind of combine everything together, and it's like a retelling of history. It's a yeah. retelling of history storyline. You know, if you thought you knew history, you didn't know history because you got evil demons and you have you need zombies. To forget what you know. Forget, <laughs> forget what you know, forget right? you know. <laughs> I mean, so I think it could fit. It could fit. And... Mm. I mean, I guess that could be an explanation to the Sentinel artifacts, right? Where the Sentinel artifacts, ooh, they were a dark ether artifact, and prima prima materia is is dark ether substance or something, right? Like you could totally, mm. you could retcon it. You absolutely could retcon chaos into dark ether, but will they do that? Probably not. But I wouldn't mind them trying. Actually, you bring up an interesting point. Yeah, because I think the community would react in a lot of ways. First of all, it definitely go trending on Twitter. It would do that. It would go trending. <laughs> Chaos yeah. would go up. Absolutely. And I think we'd really get to see that, that giant fan base that Chaos has now, see how they actually react to getting perhaps Chaos back in a way. Right. Because so many people say, oh, Chaos was so good. I loved Chaos. I can't really get rid of it. And they're the ones that said it was bad in the first place. You know what I mean? We got, right. we got a lot of thing on the chaos chaos love train now which is absolutely fine and i'm happy yeah. people can respect it for what it was i i didn't like it i didn't hate it i was just like eh, it's okay you know but i'm here for ether sort of thing yeah that's the thing that's the that's where i that's where i'm at with chaos or that's where i was at with chaos where i made a review a long time ago about the chaos storyline when ancient evil came out my biggest criticism of chaos is why why do we need to keep caring like why yeah. you know who is the order what are they doing that that they was my biggest point fast enough. I think, exactly I think that, that was, they was my want, biggest they criticism want, like why they wanted to set up a yeah. story that would go for as long as east for ether right 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 and that was something they wanted to do and they probably had it all planned out the first like good let's say maybe three four years of the story because i know jason bundell liked to have his stories all laid out for sure in advance yeah. i'm pretty sure from mob of the dead he knew the point of like revelations in that. He knew oh, what was for sure. I mean, Jason like, Blundell's mind is just the machinations of Jason Blundell's mind 
are just, I mean, it's an enigma. I mean, to kind of quote Patrick there <laughs> from SpongeBob, Patrick. right? The machinations of my mind are an enigma. I mean, that's kind of Jason Blundell, but Jason Blundell's enigma is just, it's, a it's, level. it's a whole another level of, of deep and complex storytelling, which, you know, I mean, Jason Blundell's a great storyteller. I mean, every, a lot of people at Treyarch are just great storytellers. Craig Houston's a great yeah. storyteller. You know, people who make the map designs, are, they do good visual map storytelling, too. Mm. Treyarch, people people who used to work at Treyarch and people at Treyarch are good storytellers. And that's what I love about zombies. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, the, yeah, the whole thing with chaos, right? That's, yeah, what is the order? Why are they doing this? And that wasn't and really explained. <laughs> Look at us. We're talking about Black Ops Four. Here we are. We're talking about Black Ops Four again. We knew we knew we were gonna do it. We knew we were gonna do it, and yeah, now we're I doing mean, it again. Here, here's the <laughs> thing, right? Let's actually take a few minutes to discuss chaos and you know move from Vanguard and sure, why not? Let's do it. We're already doing it anyways. But, yeah, because like I'm, I, I'm a bit interested now, right? It's like I feel like with chaos, they they had all the right points and they knew what they were wanting to do, and they definitely had the whole story laid out, but. I think the case is, first of all, partly maybe on the community because the community didn't give it enough of a chance. Right. Maybe. And again, I think partly maybe a little bit on Treyarch as well because they didn't finish off one story and then continue a new one. I think there's I think so in a way, many things, man. There's so many yeah, things with Black Ops 4 it. that got so just out of whack. And I think as well, even with Chaos, it wasn't doing itself too many favors because we really only had one sequel to what we knew in chaos already. And that was ancient evil. Right. The rest was either before, before nine or before, before even before nine as well. Right. It's cause again, this is an argument people bring up a lot, right? Gameplay, gameplay and all that out of mind, right? First of all, having voyage and nine on the same, on the, as a launch map didn't make too much sense. It was kind of random and, Again, it's good that we've seen two Chaos characters, but again, having Dead of the Night, perhaps, if it was possible, obviously the voice actors and that couldn't get there in time or whatever, they couldn't finish the map in time. Uh-huh. Having Dead of the Night and then uh, Voyage, first of all, would have made it so the story was going in one order. There's no leak stuff for anything. Even with something like Dead of the Night, someone completed Voyage first and then Dead of the Night, it doesn't really matter too much because the story's mm. still early developing. And there's no, there's no like, oh my god, I can't believe that. Then with okay. ancient evil, yeah. our characters die. What? Yeah. You know, in the end, they can't say, "Whoa, we just got, we just started liking this new set of characters." Right. What happened? Yeah. You know, that's instead of having thing. that alone and not understanding it. Yeah. And then we get ancient evil, and it's like, oh, okay, so our characters aren't actually dead. Yeah. Let's see where the story goes. And I think ancient evil is probably definitely the peak of the chaos storyline for sure it'll never come down because they probably won't make anything else i think again i think the biggest issue was first of all community didn't grasp to it instantly which isn't right. to be expected because we're coming off a 10-year story right and a completely different theme and then trick Treyarch, trick's um <clears throat> i won't say poor timing and poor planning because it's obviously i'm not a game developer i don't know what goes yeah. on behind the scenes but yeah from uh, in a perfect world, it would have went, you know, like I was saying there, and they would have probably finished off Efer first. They would have left Efer in Black Ops. That's and then again, because in Dark Efer, it's like there's so many factors that tie. It's into hard it. like, to would tell. You, would you would you rather have Chaos or Dark Efer? Because I would rather have Dark Efer, but I would like Chaos to actually got on its full season. Right. Even if they wrap things up in the map after Ancient Evil or the map after that, right? And having Black Ops Four as a pure that, and then the... during Modern Warfare's life cycle, doing Efer. Right. And then we do the Dark Keeper. How cool would that be? Right. Yeah, that's the thing, man, where Dark Ether, Dark Ether, I think the reason why that works so well for a lot of people in the community is the fact that because it's familiar, it's a familiar game or it's a familiar story with similar aspects of previous games that aren't just in zombie storylines. You literally have campaign characters like Kravchenko and Weaver and you know, Woods, I mean, Woods is a playable operator, but I mean, you know, he's still there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have all these elements from previous experiences tying into the zombie storyline. I think Dark Ether works as its own now kind of standalone, but it still ties into Ether. Where Chaos is concerned, yeah, a lot of people didn't give it a chance because like, what the fuck is this? Why, you know, this has nothing yeah. to do with, uh, this has nothing to do with Ether. What the hell's going on here? And uh, 
that's the thing. It needed more time to flourish. It needed more time to breathe. Yeah. And, you know, Ancient Evil, that's the thing, right? Like, Diego, Diego seemed like he was about to really uh, have this huge character arc, right? After Shaw and of, Bruno, yeah. you know, they, they turn into glowing eyeball float of, like, cultist right uh, and then yeah. scarlet's like unconscious or something like diego diego and scarlet were kind of being forced into the main character role now and that could have been like a really interesting dynamic with that you know and i i think another thing is too a lot of people didn't like uh scarlet in the chaos storyline oh, too because of how annoying she well. was at the start yeah exactly but then they kind of fixed her in then, ancient evil yeah they made her a little more likable in ancient evil and then uh then it just stopped. And we never see it again. We never see it again. So yeah, we never again. She's gone I now. I mean, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I, I would, I would like to say we'll see with the chaos storyline, but you just can't. You just can't. You, you know, because it probably uh, won't happen. It's kind of like um, yeah. If if we ever get Blundell on the podcast, I'm asking him about it. I'm straight up asking him, dude. What was your plan for chaos? Like, what, like, what was? What would have happened? Can you say what would have happened? Like, what? Yeah. Where, where would it, well, like, even if you can give us like a little hint, like where would the story have went? Like what? Right. How, how, the one question I would ask him is how long, how far in the future in terms of years did you have chaos in plan, plan for? Like, yeah. You had, you had from Black Ops 3 to Black Ops Sword to finish off Ether, right. which I'm sure you probably already had done, first of all. Yeah. Like you probably had the idea of roughly what was going to happen. But then during that time when you were developing Chaos, you had the comic books and all that, I'm sure mm. you did a lot more and had a lot more ideas for Chaos. How would it have been as long as Ether, do you think? Do you think there yeah. would have been a lot of plot twists and like even going a lot deeper than something that Ether could because of the way Ether was made? Or it would have been cool. It yeah. Been cool. And by the way, I know we've said this probably 50 times on the podcast, but Mr. Blundell, if you're watching. Yeah, you know. You our can, DMs are open. Can, our DMs are, our DMs are open. Want, and I hope yours you are want, too. I hope you use RT even before you don't use any form of social though, media. Hey, that's fine. One day, that's I'm going to tell you right now, one day, one of us is going to run into Jason Blundell on the street fucking randomly. And we're yeah. going to be like, oh, shit, you're Jason Blundell. Talk to him. Hey, come on the podcast. I'm telling you, that's going to – I'm right now. <laughs> you're hearing it right that's here on the Division podcast. I, 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 at some happenstance, it, we're going to meet Jason Blundell. Somehow. Somehow. I don't know how. Somehow, some way. But I think we will. Just cause I said so. Cause you said so. Exactly. <laughs> cause I said so. Fuck it. Cause I said so. Um, who makes the rules? Come on. Who makes the rules? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we, hey, we'll speak it into existence, right? People talk about speaking things you want into existence. Let's speak it into existence, man. So let's just let's just do that. Um, but yeah. So with with the dark ether continuing in Vanguard, I think it's going to be interesting to see with demons and. Creepy yeah. occult stuff. Um, Ooh, spooky. What I really want to know, here's what I really, really want to know. Speaking of Dark Ether, we had that cliffhanger with Dr. Peck at the end of Forsaken, where Dr. Peck is going to the middle of the Pacific Ocean, I, where I would assume, you know, he's going to go find the inversion warheads from the from Operacia Inversia. So I really want to see where that goes. And I don't think we're going to get that in, in Vanguard because Vanguard's going to be a prequel. So yeah. I really, you know, I don't think we're going to get that. You don't know, you want to know something as well with, if Peck is still going to be an important character, it means the story won't develop into like the days of like black ops, you know, black ops two era type. Cause there is a lot of words saying that trick are going to be making a futuristic, you know, kind of like, kind of like black ops two style game okay. for one, because people liked it. And the anniversary is closely coming up. Yeah. But with Peck still being a main character and there's not going to be a time jump or anything. And the story isn't just like... Here's the thing with Aoife, right? It's so much set in the Black Ops universe that has to tie together with everything else. There's no... It, the zombie storyline isn't separate from everything else now. It's all tying into other stuff that's canon. Mm -hmm. Like with Warzone and stuff and all that stuff, right? So it means a continuation will still be set in the Black Ops Cold War era. Right. Like that sort of time period. So we won't be going too far from home in the next game in terms of story, I think. If anything, the next game is going to be a modern setting game or like the 90s yeah. even. The 90s, 90s yeah. early 2000s, right? So 
I don't know. I think, yeah, because Peck is definitely going to be an important character still, which I'm happy about. I like Dr. Peck. He's, yeah. he, he's one I'm of those assholes that you like to thing. watch. Uh, <laughs> but Kravchenko is dead. That what a, what a, Okay, hang on. I got to say, what a way to kill Kravchenko. Just, you don't get to see it. No. He, he just... Oh, the gas line! And then Peck accidentally <laughs> shoots the gas line in, in the in the observation deck on the observation tower, and then he blows up. What a way to kill Kravchenko! It's watch, a little bit him, anticlimactic, but watch him come back. If he honestly, it, I think it can open the door for him to come back. But at this point, where it stands, I think Kravchenko is dead. He's dead. But I'll leave. I'm leaving it up to possibility that think, Kravchenko can still be alive. Here's what I think might happen. What if they try and revive him? I mean, revive me as the ray gun. Uh, no, 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 no. In the <laughs> sense that, like, I think with Vanguard, we're, I think with Vanguard, he, like, we're going with a more demonic approach, obviously. Uh-huh. What well, there's a way to bring him back, not as a zombie, but as, like, uh-huh. his own entity. You know what I mean? That'd yeah. be cool. And see, and he controlled them even more to a certain extent. He could control the actual zombies as well. Maybe. And here's the thing that, speaking of controlling the zombies, right? Court effects. Court effects is the demon that controls the undead. So here's what I'm thinking. Originally, when I saw the first teaser before the behind the scenes video, I thought Court effects was the un- was the Forsaken. And I, my original theory was that was the Forsaken before some crazy the event forsaken. happened to transmogrify in- him into the Forsaken, into the Dark Aether Crystal entity we see in, in Forsaken, the map. Obviously, it's not the case anymore. And I think we will see the Forsaken in Vanguard for one main reason. This is all I have to go off of, so let me know in the comment section if you guys agree with this or not. But in Forsaken, in the map, the Forsaken says, for 40 years, for 40 human years, he was trapped in the Dark Aether, okay? He adapted, he overcame, you know, he, he, he devoured gods, he became an ultimate being, you know, shit like that. Cold War, Black Ops Cold War, takes place in the 1980s. World World War II, War II. 1940s. So, 40 years, do, you think do we're we get to there see... In the first... Imagine if we send them there. Right, right. So, that would be a... the Forsaken, yeah. we get to see a primordial Forsaken. We get to see maybe the formation of the Forsaken. Or... Perhaps a weaker. He's devoured gods. What about the Demon Lords? What about the demon gods that that are bound to us that are the field upgrades? Why what, why is what, it that in Cold if... War we don't have the artifacts to use as field upgrades and 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 Requiem creates the wands from dark ether powers to do to to have the dark yeah. ether uh, abilities. They create the what? wands from dark ether energy and because things were trapped in the dark ether and those gods were devoured and the residue uh, uh, energy and power there because the forsaken killed what those if... elder gods. Yeah. Oh. And that's why we don't have them there but we can still access their powers. Because he devoured gods. Court effects could be killed by the forsaken. You know, Seraxis could be killed by the forsaken. Like, or are all well, of these entities combined? It, when they combine, do they become the forsaken? Forsaken. Yeah, what Ooh. what if it's the case that we? Oh, there's so many questions. I I want is, is the Forsaken dead? He's not dead. Or is, he's trapped. No, he's just he's, he's trapped, trapped in that again. Sophia unit. So so he'll be at some point in the future he'll come back most likely. Yeah. So the Forsaken's not in the Dark Ether. Samantha's now in the Dark Ether. The Forsaken is still in our world, but because the Forsaken is contained, he can't use his powers to open up dimensional breaches. So as of the 1980s, the zombies outbreak goes away. But Rick Toffin is a character. He's the director. Rick Toffin, I think, has got some sort of plan up his sleeve. Dr. Peck wants to find the inversion warheads. You know, there's 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 stuff going on. Something's going to happen. Um Dude, I just thought of that right now. Fucking all of these, all these demonic lords that got introduced. I think they all. I think they're all gonna die. I think they're gonna get Probably. devoured by the Forsaken. And that's why, that's why I, the Forsaken is the strongest out of all of them. And I, I think with the Forsaken, since he's not dead, maybe we've only t- like touched the, the peak of the iceberg with him. Maybe I think he's probably gonna be a much bigger threat in the future in some way, shape, or form. But- Shoot. <laughs> 
I guess, I guess, like closing things off is like zombies in a story wise is a good place right now. It's surprisingly, and there's so much stuff we can talk about in terms of lore, which is very exciting, dude. This is I'm excited because me personally, I really love themes of you know, like afterlife and like you know, the other world and. Uh, like gods and demons and spirits and ghosts and the paranormal. I love themes like that. I mean, yeah. sci- I would say sci-fi and I guess paranormal would be my two most my, my two favorite genres. So mm-hmm. the fact that this paranormal sci-fi kind of approach to the Dark Ether storyline is happening, it gets me really, really excited to see what's yeah. genuinely going to happen. And also fantasy. Absolutely. Fantasy is another one of my favorite genres, too. I mean, Lord of the Rings are some of the most meticulously crafted, some of the best movies in the existence mm-hmm. of, of mankind, and that is irrefutable. Um, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, except for 7, 8, 9. The, you know, the most m- meticulously crafted, most one of some of the greatest art we've ever seen. So Dark Aether could have this lore and this world building similar to that. And it gets me really, really, really excited for the future of the Dark Aether storyline. Yeah. I guess my closing thought to, to end things off here for today's episode of the podcast would be, everybody, give it a chance. Give Absolutely. Vanguard give a chance. chance. Play the game before before we start hating it. You know, we'll see what happens. There's going to be a lot of new things added. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing the evolution I'm, of I'm here. I'm absolutely here as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well... Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this episode of the Division Z Podcast. What was your favorite far... Oh my god, I almost did it again! I almost did it again! You loved it. You're doing it on purpose. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I am not. I'm going to sneak it in this time and it's going to be funny. Everyone's going to laugh. Nope. It's every time. (laughs) It's an accident. Because I combine favorite and part. What was your favorite part of this episode of the Division Z podcast, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. See, comments. I said I said that very slowly. I wanted to ar- articulate a little bit more. Um, I guess with that said, thank you so much for watching episode 66. Make sure you check out the links down below in the description so you stay up to date with everything Division Z does and with everything me and Cosmic do. And uh, mm-hmm. have a fantastic rest of your day or night, depending on where you are in this crazy world. We'll see you guys in the dark ether with demons and just having having a great time doing some a great demonic time. stuff, I guess. I, I, I don't know. We'll see you guys in the dark ether. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, Peace out.